Whether you just landed your first job, your first internship, or are starting to apply for your first job, you're probably curious what that first few days or months of work is going to look like. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what to expect. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now, like I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about what to expect from the first few days, weeks, months, or even year of your first job or internship, because a lot of people have a lot of different ideas of what their first job is going to look like. And of course, this is going to vary greatly depending on what job you take and where you live and all these other factors. But in general, the advice that I'm going to give you in this video should hopefully explain what you can expect from the first beginning parts of your job. Now, the first thing I want to do is kind of throw out the stereotype a lot of people think of when they think of an entry level developer or maybe even just an intern. And that's that you're just going to be the person running back and forth, getting coffee for people, stapling papers together and doing a bunch of meaningless non programming related tasks. And this is kind of what they portray in like the movies and TV shows. And this is completely wrong, at least when it comes to programming jobs. There is so much demand out there for programmers, web developers, software developers, really any type of programmer, that if someone hires you on as a developer, whether it's as a junior developer or an intern, they want you to do development work. They're not going to be making you run back and forth, getting coffee or stapling papers or doing other meaningless tasks. The work that you do may not be as complicated as what a full-time, you know, senior level developer is going to be doing, but you're going to be doing development work. And if you're at a company where you're not doing any development work or you're doing very little development work, I would seriously consider looking around trying to find a different job because most jobs that are development jobs should not be having you do a bunch of non-development work. And before you start yelling at me saying that you have tons of meetings and stuff to go to, that's that's okay. That's perfectly common inside of a developer job. But if you're doing meaningless tasks like, you know, getting coffee or running errands for people, that is not the job of a developer. And if that's the stuff you're doing, you should look elsewhere for a job. So now that we have that like stereotypical idea out of the way, what can you expect at the very beginning of your job? Maybe first day, first week of your job. Well, the very first day is going to be a lot of, you know, paperwork kind of related tasks. You're going to be filling out a bunch of paperwork, you know, applying to different systems, getting login credentials, just a bunch of stuff that you need to do to be able to integrate yourself into the workflow they have. Most likely you're applying for a company position. This company is going to have quite a few employees. They're going to have their own systems, their own technology, their own products, their own apps they use, and you need to get credentials for all of them, logged into all of them, access to all of them. Depending on how large the company you're applying to is and how much of this they have, this could take anywhere from a few hours all the way to a couple weeks even if you're at a really, really large company you have a lot of hoops to jump through. So expect a little bit of that at the beginning of your job. But that shouldn't be too bad. It's going to be a little bit more when you first start, and as the days go on, it should become less and less and less until you finally have access to everything you need. Now, the next thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you're going to have a lot of training at whatever job you apply for. Whether it's an internship position or a first full-time job, you're going to have a ton of training. And this is not only going to be training on how their different systems work. For example, if you apply to a large company, they have particular systems, they have particular workflows they go through, and you need to be trained on how they do things, how they run code reviews, how they run all their projects, the different systems they use. You're going to need to get trained up on all of that. And again, depending on how large the company you apply for is, this may be a lot of training. I mean, this could take weeks or even a few months to learn all of the different intricacies of how all the pieces work together. Smaller companies will have less training, while larger companies will have a lot of onboard training. Also, something a lot of people don't realize is that you're going to have training that is actually language related. Let's say that you apply for a job as like a front end developer, at like a React based company. I'm guaranteeing you that you're going to have quite a bit of training around React, JavaScript, CSS, whatever it is that you either lack in or this team specializes in. So if they specialize in React, I guarantee you, you're going to have some React training that you're going to go through. It may be direct React training where they have modules they make you complete or courses that they make you complete. Or it could be indirect training where they work you through some smaller projects, maybe some internal projects and have really heavy code reviews where more senior developers will really help you walk you through the code, help you see where you make mistakes, help you, you know, make your code more like the code of the rest of the project. That way you can work within the confines of the whole team, because if you're just going off solo, building things the way you build them and it clashes with the way the company builds things, that's really bad for the company, really bad for the code. So they're going to try to morph you and train you the best that they can to make it so that your coding style will fit in with the company coding style. 
This right here is honestly the best part about landing your first job because you're able to learn so much. I mean, within just your first year of this job, you're going to learn more than all of the time that you're doing self-taught training, any boot camp or school you went through. This one year time period, even six months, you're going to learn so much because you're going to be actively writing code every single day, or at least every couple days at the very least. You're going to be getting that code reviewed by professional senior developers or mid-level developers, people that know more than you, and they're going to be able to train you and teach you on all the things that you're doing wrong, show you better ways to do things, how to write clean code, how to write tests, things that are really hard to learn on your own. These are the things that they're going to be teaching you, and this is invaluable. When you first start your job, take these first few weeks, months, and even year and really double down on making sure you listen to everything people tell you and try to improve yourself because the improvement that you can make in this first year is going to be drastic and that improvement not only will make you a better developer but it'll also make you worth more to future employees so that way you can get better raises you can go to other companies and get a better job there a higher paying job you can negotiate for a better salary better benefits whatever it is so take this time this you know six months to a year time period and really use it to invest into yourself as much as possible into learning and becoming a better developer because that'll let you go from junior developer to mid-level developer so much sooner than people just kind of brush off what these other people say and say, you know what, I do it this way. This is the way I want to do it. I'm not going to listen to anything you say. These are the people that get stuck as a junior developer for way too long. Listen to what the smarter, more senior developers have to say because most likely what they have to say is based on years of experience and years of training themselves so they know what the best option for you is. So after you complete this dedicated training they have and you start working on different projects, what can you actually expect to be working on as a junior level developer or intern? Because you may not think you're ready to work on these large scale applications, but in all reality, more than likely you're gonna be shoved right into whatever project the company is working on. And it may be their big production application, or you may get thrown onto a smaller side project or even an internal project. Generally, if this company has an internal tool that you can work on, they're gonna have you work on that first because the stakes are much lower. If you make a huge error that gets pushed up to production, it doesn't matter because it only affects the internal team, so it doesn't affect the outward customers, or they may have you work on a smaller side project that's not related to their main project. But some companies might just throw you straight into their main product, having you work on it right away just like any other developer because they have good code reviews and they have good policies in place in order to prevent you from making these types of mistakes. Either way, you're going to be writing code from essentially day one. That is what developers do, and these people are paying you good money to write code, so they want you to write code. So like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're at a company that you're not writing a lot of code, you're doing a bunch of non-developer related tasks, make sure that you look elsewhere because maybe you don't have the best job, or maybe the company is not really treating you as a developer and is instead treating you as just like a generic intern. Another important thing to realize is that the companies that you work for have large, big projects. Up to this point, the largest project you probably worked on has taken you weeks, or maybe even a couple months to build out by yourself in your spare time. But these companies have projects that have been around from years and years, even decades of code going into one single project from tens to hundreds of different developers all working on it full time. So these code bases are massive and it can become really difficult to realize what you need to do in such a large code base because there's thousands and thousands of lines of code, hundreds of files spread across all over the place. So figuring out how all this works is actually really difficult. And part of the very beginning of you working at this company is going to be just figuring out how the code works, working in small pieces of it until eventually you start working all over the code base in various different pieces and start to piece together what everything is doing, what it all means. But this is a process that takes weeks, months, and sometimes even years, depending on the size of this code base. So don't get discouraged if you jump in and you see thousands of lines of code and don't know what any of it means because that's perfectly normal. That's how pretty much everyone feels when they started a new company, whether a junior developer or even a senior developer, because you need to get jump started on learning how the code works because it's different at every single company. The final thing to expect from a company when you first apply is that you might actually get paired up with a mentor. This is someone inside of the company. They're usually going to be some senior level developer or mid-level developer that knows the code base pretty well. They're going to be paired up with you to help code review all your code, answer any questions you have, and really just facilitate your learning to try to make you as productive as quickly as possible. If you get this opportunity, take advantage of it. This person is literally here. Their job is to try to help you out, learn to code, learn the code base, and learn best practices. So what you need to do is take advantage of that, ask them questions, make sure you get code reviews for them, take their feedback seriously, and really try to improve yourself. Having a mentor like this is incredibly valuable and something I wish every company would do. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this.
Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.